Now notice the effect upon Job, and we come to chapter 42. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Is that the kind of a God that you have to do anything? Now, I know now the old saw about, can God make a rock so big he can't lift it? Now, may I say to you, that's like the question you asked Mr. Milktoes. Are you still beating your wife? Well, you can answer that by yes or no. And that other question has no answer for the simple reason that God never does anything foolish. He always does things in the context of his character. And he's always true to himself. And so you can't tell God to do something that he can't do. You know why? Because, my friend, you're in no position to do that. And God's not your errand boy after all. And he's not going to jump through a hoop just because you hold it up. May I say to you, listen to Job now. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Job says, I've been talking about something I don't know anything about. That is the way we used to have bull sessions in the college dorm I went to. We had finished studying at night and meet in some room. Some fellow said, what are we going to talk about? And I used to say, well, let's talk about something that we don't know anything about. Then the sky's the limit. We can say anything we want to say. My friend, may I say to you, he's been talking about things he knows nothing about, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. He's talking without knowledge. He doesn't know. Now, will you listen to Job? Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I'll demand of thee, and declare thou of me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Listen to Job now. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Now this man Job, he has a new conception of God now. He is not in a position to question God in anything that he does. He's to trust him. He's in a new relationship. Now he's in a new relationship with himself. He sees himself, first of all, as vile. And then he says, I abhor myself. You know what he's doing? He's repenting, my friend. These are the steps. I repent in dust and ashes. These are the three steps, really, of repentance. Is first of all, do you see your vile? And the second, do you abhor yourself? My friend, when you quit trusting yourself, you quit trying to live on an old dead carcass, and you'll turn to the living God today, that's repentance. And that's the repentance that is in faith. What a wonderful thing it is.